Mark Rogers TV getting you set for the 2017 college football season, rating the top 10 at each position. We've done this now four consecutive off seasons. Check out the previous videos from 2016 going back. So let's start with the quarterbacks. And this is not a situation where I'm rating the quarterbacks based on 2016. This is a projection for 2017. Obviously, their track record previously weighs heavily into that, but I'm also putting a projection on how much they're going to develop. Also, I'm not taking NFL draft status into consideration. I'm not projecting who's going to be a star at the next level, who the scouts are going to love at the next level. NFL status has nothing to do with it. Some of these players are going to be lowly rated at this level and turn out to be competent quarterbacks in the NFL. Others will be stars in college and not make the cut in the NFL. Also, I'm rating these players as complete quarterbacks, game managers, throwers of the football, and runners as well. I'm not just uh, rating them as throwers of the football, but what they can do against the defense as a complete quarterback. Also, take into consideration that I'm not just rating them based on what I project their stats to be. So the offensive line and the wide receivers come into play here. Most lists that you see rating the top quarterbacks, whether NFL or college, are rating them based also on the accompaniment around them, the, the running backs, the wide receivers, and the offensive line, and how much those players will help them and aid them to compile statistics. But I'm not rating that. For example, let's go to the NFL. If Tom Brady left the New England Patriots and went to the worst supporting cast in the NFL, his stats would suffer. But I would still rate him to be, along with Aaron Rodgers, to be the two best quarterbacks in the NFL, even though their stats would suffer. So I'm not projecting these 10 quarterbacks to have necessarily the 10 best statistical years. They are, in my eyes, the 10 best quarterbacks. All right, let's start at number 10 with a guy who is a gunslinger. He's a game changer. He's a playmaker. Sometimes this hurts him, though. He chucks it downfield repeatedly, and he trusts his wide receivers. This turned into chunk yardage plays all season that uh, catapulted the Penn State Nittany Lions to a Big Ten championship and a 49-point per performance in the Rose Bowl and a near-Rose Bowl upset of USC. Of course, I'm talking about Trace McSorley. 58% com uh, completion percentage last year, 3,614 yards, 29 touchdowns through the eight air, eight interceptions against Wisconsin. He had probably his best showing in a comeback victory, four touchdown passes, 384 passing yards. Uh, he came on actually at the conclusion of the 2015 season when Christian Hackenberg was hurt early in the Georgia game in the Tax Slayer Bowl. McSorley came on. It looked pretty mundane most of the ball game, but led two touchdown drives near the end of the game to almost pull off uh, the win against Georgia. In the Rose Bowl, we saw the good, we saw the bad. Four touchdown passes, three interceptions, 254 yards passing. Uh, he brought Penn State back from a 14-point deficit. They scored seven straight touchdowns on seven straight possessions. He also threw the aforementioned chuck-it-up type of play downfield that led to the USC game-winning field goal. He doesn't have Chris Godwin to make those kind of plays this year. DeAndre Tompkins will make some plays, but Chris Godwin missing is going to hurt McSorley's statistics. But very impressive in the big games. Uh, led the comeback from two early season losses to defeat the likes of Ohio State, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, and almost USC in the Rose Bowl. Trace McSorley in his junior season, the 10th best quarterback in college football. At number nine, I go with a guy who only played almost six games before he was hurt against Arizona State last year. I'm speaking of the very talented Josh Rosen out of UCLA. Last season, Less than six games played, 10 touchdowns, five interceptions, threw for 59% completion percentage. The deal with Rosen is he had a pretty rough opening at College Station with three interceptions, still led UCLA to a tying touchdown to move that game into overtime. Then he threw another interception, and uh, the Bruins lost to the Aggies. After that, 
check the game logs, and you will see that Josh Rosen was very consistent. Nine touchdowns, two picks the rest of the season before he was hurt in a loss against Arizona State. He put up the the numbers, even though his wide receiver core was pretty, pretty mediocre. He needs a downfield speed threat to take um, advantage of the big-time NFL-type arm that Josh Rosen has. Ton of talent, classic pocket passer, big talent. Uh, the season before, he led a comeback win against uh, BYU with a final drive, uh, led what would have been the game-winning touchdown against Washington State, then the ball was out of his hands. He was my fifth-rated quarterback going into 2016. He was off to a decent start. Josh Rosen coming back for UCLA. Needs some help to... Uh, get back to his 2015 performance with 23 touchdowns and 11 picks going into his junior season. All right, at number eight, Jake Browning of Washington took a huge leap from his freshman to his sophomore season statistically. Uh, Browning uh, had some rough goes early as a freshman, as you might expect. He was on the road against Boise State and completely ambushed by that defense, almost led a comeback victory there. Washington lost five games that season. Browning threw, threw 16 touchdowns with 10 interceptions. Then last year, he took off. 43 touchdown passes, nine interceptions, had tremendous game after tremendous game, threw a 6-0 and start. Then USC came in and made him look bad. 17 of 36, two interceptions in that game, a game that the Huskies never were really in. And then the next best team that they played down the stretch, of course, was Alabama. And Jake Browning didn't have a much of a chance in that game. The offensive line was overwhelmed by the best defensive front seven in college football. And uh, Browning hit for 20 for 38 for 150 and a touchdown and two picks. The one pick was was ill-fated on, the, on the, um, the screen pass that was picked off for the touchdown when Washington was down just 10 to 7 at that point. All told, when given a chance, when the offensive line held up, which it did, a very formidable offensive line at Washington last season, Jake Browning delivered. But against the two best teams he faced, the two best defenses, Jake Browning disappointed to a certain extent. Much of it was him, much of it uh, the offensive line. No John Ross, the fastest guy in college football for Jake Browning to throw to this year in leading the Washington Huskies. All right, at number seven, I've got a guy who most people would consider to be one of the three best quarterbacks in college football for a for a, almost a three-year stretch. And now the world is completely against him, and that is JT Barrett of Ohio State coming off a shutout loss against Clemson. How much of it was his fault? Well, he's the quarterback, and he failed to make some plays, and he missed some throws. But the offensive line was completely ambushed by the Clemson defensive front. His playmakers were non-existent, which seems unfathomable at Ohio State. But JT Barrett turned in a solid season. But in the big games, there were issues against the better defenses. 62% completion percentage, 2,500 yards, 24 touchdowns, passing seven interceptions. And we also talked about the rushing factor playing into the rankings here. And JT Barrett can burn a defense. No, he's not an elite speedster, but man, he is a savvy runner. He knows when to run and he does it at the right times. 845 yards rushing last year, nine touchdowns. This guy has accounted for 100 touchdowns. In his career, he is the all-time leader in Big Ten touchdowns, breaking Drew Brees' record. He was the Offensive Player of the Year in the Big Ten for two years. Uh, if we go back a couple years and we see the JT Barrett of 2014 and 15, then he will be a top three quarterback. I rated him second in the nation going into last season behind only Deshaun Watson. And some of the calling card list of JT Barrett uh, characteristics a couple years ago. He's accurate. He throws on time. He anticipates well. He throws into windows. All those things seem to diminish last year. So he either was hurt or he just could not trust that offensive line after they let him down time and time again, especially in the Penn State game. And then uh, 
in a big way against Clemson, and nobody stepped up at wide receiver. This was the worst showing by a, an Ohio State wide receiver group that we've seen in quite some time. JT Barrett, still the seventh best quarterback in college football going into 2017. All right, this next guy, I like to repeat this from time to time to remind people how close Luke Falk took what was previously a three-win team to that close to going to the Rose Bowl. In 2015, Luke Falk tore up a formidable Stanford defense, led the Washington State Cougars on a final drive down the field, 70 yards, and then the field goal was missed. Otherwise, Washington State would have gone to the Rose Bowl in place of a top five Stanford team. That's how good Luke Falk was two years ago. Last year, he basically did what we would expect him to do. He ripped up the bad defenses and played pretty well overall. And of course, because of Mike Leach's offense and how much they throw the football, the, the numbers are pretty still eye-popping at 70%. 4,500 yards passing, 40, uh, 38 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. He was held in check and frustrated against Minnesota in the Holiday Bowl. The Golden Gophers, with a very strong and underrated secondary, really kept everything in front of them and frustrated Falk when he went uh, 30 for 51 and really no downfield meaningful throws in that game. He was the fourth-rated efficiency passer in college football last year. And... Uh, 89 touchdowns career, 26 interceptions. Uh, when he was missing down the stretch in 2015, the offense completely was non-existent. He's led two comebacks against UCLA, and we saw how many Bruins were selected off of that defense that played the last two years in the NFL draft. Luke Falk, I had him fourth rated going into 2016. Right now, the sixth rated quarterback in college football. All right, at number five, I go to Florida State and DeAndre Francois. This guy is not just multi-talented uh, running and throwing, but he is a tough kid. Did you see the Clemson game? Did you see the Miami game? And it all started against Ole Miss. He was beat up in that game by the Ole Miss front. The Florida State offensive line was not up to its standards for most of the season. The Seminoles should be better up front this year but he was beat up from game one, and what did he do? He led comebacks, the monumental comeback from 18 down against Ole Miss. Uh, he led a comeback against Miami when they were down 13 to nothing. Final touchdown drive in the final three minutes at North Carolina State to win that game, and then even though he didn't have a great passing game in the Orange Bowl, when Michigan finally came back and took the lead, what did DeAndre Francois do in the last 45 seconds? took the Knolls right back down the field, won the game, and won it with a two-point conversion as well. All right, the offensive line should be better at Florida State. DeAndre Francois is one of the best in the game. 20 touchdowns, 7 picks, 59% thrower. That percentage completion should go up. He had five rushing touchdowns, and he's coming just into his redshirt sophomore season. And even in a loss at home against North Carolina, don't pin it on DeAndre Francois. He left the field with the lead. His defense gave up the late field goal and the drive by Mitchell Trubisky. DeAndre Francois is the fifth best quarterback in college football. All right, at number four, I like the senior Mason Rudolph out of Oklahoma State. He limited the interceptions from nine down to four last year. The touchdowns through the air increased from 28, 21 to 28. Uh, what a game he had against Colorado's secondary in the Alamo Bowl. 314 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. And I mentioned Colorado in particular because two of those defensive backs were highly drafted in the NFL. The Buffs had one of the best secondaries in college football. He also ran for six touchdowns. He's not going to run for yardage, but he knows when to run. He's, he's elusive in the pocket, and uh, he's tough to bring down. Uh, Mason Rudolph with a big game against Kansas State. Uh, and the better defenses in the Big 12, and, and and we know that there's a disclaimer there, better defenses in the Big 12. Hit up uh, the Wildcats for 457 through the air and five touchdowns. West Virginia was a three-touchdown, no-interception game. Uh, Texas the same with 392 yards passing, three touchdowns, and no picks. He did have the one-off game against the Oklahoma Sooners, the one formidable defense in the Big 12, 
Mason Rudolph, just 11 of 25 against OU. He's our fourth best quarterback going into 2017, Mason Rudolph of OK State. All right, he won the Heisman this past season, but he is not the best quarterback in college football. He is number three, and the rushing has a whole lot to do with it. Probably not a top 10 thrower is Lamar Jackson, who was thrown into the role when Bobby Petrino had really four quarterbacks at the time in 2015. Lamar Jackson took over, and he learned on the job. And he really showed out in the Music City Bowl to conclude the season against Texas A&M in a big win over the Aggies when he accounted for 453 yards and four total touchdowns. He parlayed that into an offseason where he really improved as a passer and then put up video game-type stats this past season. That, along with an upset of Florida State at home, where he didn't really have a huge game. His defense had the big game, but he put up 63 points. Sounds like he had a big game, but it was basically just an ambush of Florida State. That won him the Heisman Trophy. He shouldn't have won the Heisman Trophy. Somebody else should have been given the award named Deshaun Watson, but uh, he was the Heisman Trophy winner with the gaudy stats of 3,500 yards passing, 1,571 yards rushing, and 45 total touchdowns, 30 through the year, 15 on the ground, nine interceptions, but down the stretch. Bad game against Houston. Yes, the offensive line did not play well, and he was held by the Houston front, but against Kentucky, didn't have a good game. Threw three interceptions against a Wildcats defense that is porous, and in the bowl game against LSU, did not have a chance as the Tigers showed their wares on defense, and we saw in the NFL draft with Beckwith and Riley and company going Godshaw that the Tigers were seriously uh, outmanning the Cardinals up front and Lamar Jackson did not have an answer. Third best quarterback in college football coming into his junior season, Lamar Jackson of Louisville. All right, at number two, we got Baker Mayfield. We had him rated seventh best going into 2016 and he showed us that uh, he's a little bit better than that. And most of these guys that were rated in our top 10 from last season have moved on to the NFL. So Falk at four last year, Rosen at five, Barrett at two, Mayfield at seven. So four of the 10 have stayed in college football. The others have moved on. Baker Mayfield, for as tremendous as he was the season before and leading the Sooners to the college football playoff, he was even better last year. He increased the touchdowns, decreased the picks, 40 to 8 ratio, 71%, just under 4,000 yards rushing. He ran for six touchdowns. Um, Heisman Trophy finalist, he's a playmaker. He probably does not translate to the NFL as a star quarterback, doesn't have the size or the arm strength, but as a college football quarterback, this guy is about as good as it gets. Uh, in the loss to Houston to start the season, don't pin it on Baker Mayfield, pin it on the defense. 24 for 33, 323 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. Didn't play well against the Buckeyes, but the defensive front seven chased him all over the field. It was similar to the college football playoff game at the Orange Bowl the season before where he just didn't have a chance because he's used to running away from Big 12 defenses that have one NFL guy on the front seven, and then suddenly he's facing Ohio State and Clemson where they're bringing five or six guys that will play at the next level, and he couldn't get away. I'm going to bring up the Texas Tech game, and yes, Texas Tech is a joke, joke on defense, but they could not, meaning Oklahoma, stop Patrick Mahomes, and so Baker Mayfield had to score on every possession, basically, and he did. Seven touchdowns, 545 yards passing. And so say what you will about uh, the Big 12 and Big 12 defenses, and I do it often here, but against Auburn. And that defensive front, Baker Mayfield showed up in th at the Sugar Bowl and won the game with a fine performance, 296 yards and two touchdowns against Auburn. Baker Mayfield, number two quarterback in college football. Okay, who's number one? And I'm not making too much out of the Rose Bowl, but the Rose Bowl is the classic example against a good defense, not Clemson, not Alabama, Ohio State, but a good defense. One of the 
20 or 25 best defenses in the country in Penn State. Sam Darnold was remarkable. 33 of 53 with some dropped passes. 453 yards, five touchdown passes, one interception. Brought USC back from two touchdowns down in the final quarter to win the game at the Rose Bowl. And beyond the numbers, ESPN did a nice job of showing Darnold's throws from different angles. You see the pocket presence, the awareness. You see the anticipation skills where he can throw. make He can make all the throws, and he can make them on the move. It looks beautiful coming out of the arm and out of the hand when he's in the pocket, but he can be put off of his platform and still make accurate throws. And his mobility is very underrated. He can hurt a defense not by breaking contain and running for 15 yards, although he did that a few times and converted third downs, but by escaping the pocket and then finding his man. Juju Smith-Schuster will not uh, be available this year, but maybe Darnold has found another go-to guy in Deontay Burnett, who caught 13 passes at the Rose Bowl and three touchdowns after only catching like 35 balls throughout the season. Sam Darnold and everything that he showed us throughout the season, 31 touchdowns, nine interceptions, and almost 3,100 yards passing, that he right now, going into 2017, is the best quarterback in the land. Okay, McSorley 10, Rosen 9, Browning 8, Barrett 7, Folk 6, Francois at number five, Rudolph at four, Andrew top three, Lamar Jackson at three, Baker Mayfield at two, Sam Darnold, the top quarterback in college football. Look down at the description section and you will see all the quarterbacks I looked at and considered in making this final 10. Would love to hear from you now on Mark Rogers TV.